Hi friends, this is Carol from Carol Makes and it's Fiber Friday. <clears throat> Can't remember what week we're on, but I will figure that out before this gets uploaded to YouTube, but welcome back. Today for this Fiber Friday, we are going to be knitting and talking about increases. There are five or six different ways to increase your stitches when you're knitting. Um, and they all look very different. And so you need to know when to use which one so that you get the desired effect. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the right lifted increase and the left lifted increase. So in a pattern book, it would say RLI or LLI. I was aware of it, um, but hadn't seen it for ages. And I'm in a pattern right now and it came up and I watched the video and then I thought, you know what? This might be a good video for us um, today to just get that out there so that you can see how it's done um, and maybe you'll use it too. So the RLI and the LLI are specifically used when you want to have an invisible increase. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. And I'm going to show you the yarn and the project that I'm using and the pattern that I found on Ravelry before we get started. So initially I got onto Ravelry and started looking at hats, knitted hats, and then specifically ones that were unisex or masculine. And I was pretty sure I wanted to work from top down. I don't know why I wanted to work from top down, but that's, you know, that was the feeling I had in the moment. Um, so thankfully with Ravelry, you can add in those parameters and it will show you all of those options um, based on your you know, your feelings, your moods. Um, so this is what uh, I found that I liked the most. This is the top down no math hat. I love hearing that. I don't want to count. I don't want to measure. The least amount of math I can do is awesome. Um, I also was looking at masculine or unisex because I had a very specific vision in mind this is getting knit for my husband um, specifically as a hat for winter recess. Because if you are a teacher or you know a teacher, you already know. You need to be bundled up. You need to have <clears throat> layers upon layers. Um, so yeah, he works in special education elementary. He goes outside every single day for recess. So I was spinning up this yarn um, and it it's kind of bulky and it is very dense. So it was, you know, it was already kind of telling me, it was giving me those winter recess vibes. So you can also see on here that this is by Susan Jackson Gonzalez. Susan Gonzalez Designs. Um, it is a free pattern. So I will link down in the comments the link to, to Ravelry and then the link that she gives for her free pattern. The yarn that I'm using is 100% llama. I spun it and plied it. I used my electric eel wheel um, and just did a chain ply. I actually did not measure it. Um, that's probably frowned upon, but I did not measure it. There is so much of it at home. I absolutely knew there was going to be enough for a hat, probably enough for a scarf as well, but we're gonna, we're gonna start with the hat. Um, so yeah, it's just this beautiful brown color. Um, I was super happy with how it turned out. Um, like I said, it's kind of bulky because it's plied. Um, I just realized I left my color on. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm super happy with it. I think it'll be perfect for outdoor recess with children. Um, yeah, I love it. I was very, very proud of it. Okay, so I'm putting that down. I have started in on Susan's pattern. Let me see if I can focus this a little bit more. There we go. Um, and of course I have like all these different kinds of stitch markers, fancy ones, you know, pretty ones. Um, do I have any of them today in the studio? No. <sighs> so you got to MacGyver this. We're using paper clips. <laughs> And I just put two paper clips instead of one um, to mark where the beginning of my round is because I started at the top um, and I've already gotten to the point where I wove in my end. Um, it's already woven in there. So I, I can't really tell you where I started, but I know two paper clips tell me that's my starting round. Okay, so again, we are talking about increases. So there are lots of different ways to do increases. Oh, and I'm using a size four needle. I honestly maybe should have gone up to five, but I will say that doing the four um, is giving me a very dense stocking knit, um, which will be great, but size four, that's what I'm on. Um, so here is one way to do an increase going into the stitch, knitting, coming through, do not take the stitch off, go around to the back. knit through the back loop. Yeah. And then you have two. And the only thing that you will see um, as you look at it later, there'll just be a little bit of a bump there. That's the only part. All right, so we're gonna take that out. Um, another way to do an increase, let's see, knit as normal, yarn over. It's an increase. You'll have a hole right there, um, and this will become a new stitch in the next row, but that's an increase. So we're going to take our yarn over background. Um, you can also do an increase. I'm going to take these out just for a second. Between this first stitch and the second stitch, this bar here, you can go in through there, wrap around, and come back up. There'll be a little bit of a hole there. So it's a little similar to um, the yarn over. And I'm sure I can think of more. But for today, that's not how we're doing it. So we are doing the right leaning increase and the left leaning increase because in this pattern she wants the top of the hat she wants the increases to be nearly invisible okay so put this back on here okay so for her pattern she wants you to have um, a stitch marker after when you started um, after the first the third the fifth and the seventh that you cast on so to help myself visually i 
distributed these on four double points. And I know that I will start my right leaning increase at the beginning of every double point needle. Okay. So I, to do the right leaning increase, I am not worrying about this stitch on the needle. I am going to the stitch below it. Sometimes this stitch is called the mother stitch. Now, I'm not the one who came up with this terminology, but there is a knitter who came up with the stitch that is on the needle is the child. The stitch underneath it is the mother. The stitch under the mother is the grandmother. So for your right leaning increase, you will be working with the mother. Now, spoiler, for the left leaning increase, we will be um, working with the grandmother. But for right now, we're doing um, left lifted increase. I keep saying leaning, I'm sorry, left lifted increase. Okay. So I'm going to pick up the mother and very carefully put her onto the needle. I'm going to wrap my yarn around, pull through. Okay. So I have added one and then this one in the beginning is still there. I did my lifted increase. I'm going to knit two and move my stitch markers, my fancy stitch markers. Okay, now, I did two. I need to do the left lifted increase. If I were to do another lift in the mother stitch, which would be the one underneath the child, it would actually, this child stitch would be pulled through because you just made it. So you have to go all the way to the grandmother, which is down here. Again, you're just knitting right through it and putting it up here. Oop, I bumped the camera, sorry. So. And then her pattern says, knit to the end of the needle, or we will do it again. And if we look, you know, you don't get that, you know, great solid line when you do um, like an adding one or uh, knitting in that little bar area. It is pretty invisible. So let's try it again. We have to get through the whole row. Okay. Get all my things ready. Okay. Mother. Knit two. Grandmother. Okay. Knit to end.
every so often though, I am like kind of stretching it out a little bit. Kind of giving it some shape. Grab the mother. Nope, wait. Awkward. Mother still stayed on the needle, which is good. I could reposition myself and get that to be knit and moved on. Did my two. would be mother stitch. This is grandmother. And I insert my needle. Now. One last needle. That'll get us to the end of our round. Mother. be mother and grandmother. So in this pattern, every row that you do your increases, which is every other row, um, you are increasing by eight stitches. It's only a two row repeat. You have an increase row and then the next row you are knitting all the way around. No increases, no decreases, just a plain row. And with her pattern, you, because there is no pattern and there is no math, um, you are knitting until you get the circumference you want. So for me, because it's, it's not for me, it's for my husband, um, I'm going to go for a while and then I'm basically going to put it on his head and we'll be able to say, oh, that needs some more or nope, that looks good, that, you know, that's a good fit. Um, so it, it's really about trial and error. And sometimes people like those patterns and sometimes people don't. There are some people that, you know, want to know exactly how many stitches do I need? What's the gauge? This, this pattern is a little more free form and I like that. Um, so that's how you do your right leaning increase, your left leaning increase. Um, and hopefully you can continue to make one of these as well. Um, when I am done with this, I will post pictures um, and I will post links to Susan's design on Ravelry and her design, which is published on the web and free. Thanks for 
stopping in today for our Fiber Friday, talking about increases in your knitting. Happy knitting!